So, Gavin, uh, as always, it's good to see you and uh, good to talk to you. Not ideal for Harps at the moment, I suppose, given the amount of injuries and players missing that, that they have when, when you go to play a, a team of the talent and the calibre of Shamrock Rovers. You would like to have uh, a full deck going there, but it's it's not the case. Um, a lot of people will be saying Harps will be up against it on Friday night, but uh, is there any sort of thing there indicating to you that maybe a point could be a good result for Harps coming back down the road, that, that, that that's something that they can achieve? Ah, uh, look, it's probably the toughest task in, in the League of Ireland is to go to Sam Rovers and get a result. Um, obviously, they're down bodies and, and the squad are, is light anyway. Uh, the bench and, and strength and depth isn't there this season. So, look, it's, it's hard to hold out much hope, but look, they'll go down, obviously, with the defensive setup, try to frustrate the game, try and fight for every ball. And you, you never know in football what can happen or, or what the result can be. But look, I, I don't. I don't see, I don't see this. It's nearly a free game for Harps as such. I don't think the expectations of three points or a point as 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 realistic. Yeah, because the other two games coming up, but what Harps will be suggesting has been more important, Gavin. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, UCD and Drogheda the next two after that, um, hugely important. They're they're the the pro. The six pointers, proverbial six pointers at this stage of the season. Even you know the way you should hear sort of being cut a draft. If Harps got a couple more wins, you know um, they probably they could be looking at yes, we're going to fight it out for a playoff spot with the likes of Drada, with the likes of Shelburne. But um, they will be much more important games. Yeah, is it the sort of game then against Shamrock Rovers that maybe Ollie might give a run out to some of the players that haven't seen much much action since the start of the campaign? Because when you see it on the television, there, there's a number of players there on the bench, and they are particularly young. That maybe is this the sort of game that you throw them in? I'm not too sure. I don't think it will. Um, it's probably a tough environment, a tough task to ask them to go on, even though the expectations of the results are not the same. But like they could. I can't see Ollie doing that. I think he'll play his, his strongest team that he has available, you know, and, and, and see from there and try and set up to try and frustrate Rovers. So I do, I, he doesn't take many chances with the squad selection anyway, so I can't see it. Yeah. What did you make of their performance uh, the last day against Shelburne? Uh, obviously, Harps having mm. two ones now on the board, both against Shells. Yeah, yeah. How big was that one for them last week? Huge one. Um Obviously, at Thumb Park, you want to be picking up points against the teams around you, especially. And 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 they really needed it because they hadn't won, and I don't know how many games was it eight or nine before that since they won. So it was it was really 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 needed because there was a chance of them being cut off from maybe the pack ahead of them if Shelburne had beaten them. So huge result. Um, you could see the players' reaction and getting the winner and how how, how important it was. And it sets them up well. Like, but again, if they didn't get that result, they were they were looking looking down the barrel like a bit. Yeah, it was a great strike by Barry McNamee. Yeah, great strike, uh, great uh, dummy by Luke Rodden, and and get, Barry's obviously a very composed footballer, and he, he picked his spot and struck it well, and great to see it going. Yeah. Uh, so then, Harps off to Dublin to Tala to play Shamrock Rovers. We'll have updates from that game on Friday night. Oshin Langan uh, will be there as Harps will look to go to uh, frustrate the defending champions. But Shamrock Rovers, of course, have uh, a different eye on the table compared to that of Finn Harps, Gavin. Uh, they're looking to, to close out Derry City at the mm -hmm. top of, of the table. Derry currently three points clear. They're back at home at the Brandywell Stadium, the Ray McBride Brandywell Stadium up against Bohemians and uh, you would think going into this game that Derry will be continuing on their on their winning way Gavin you would they're very formidable the minute they look they're playing with so much energy and charisma they look like a very settled side um, they're a joy to watch they're the hardest working team in the league um, and they're getting their just rewards they've scored 13 goals in the last two games away to St. Pat's 1-4-0 is a phenomenal result and anybody's books, um, so they'll be looking to continue continue with that rich vein of form. And again, both are good side, difficult. They're a bit inconsistent this season, but it's it's very hard to see not see passing or three points for Derry on Friday. Yeah, and I've seen Alan Alan Reynolds in the preview piece he done this week that he's he's asking Derry to work harder, particularly when they're when they're out of possession, Gavin. Mm -hmm. well, I think they're the hardest working team in the league as far as I can see so far. So. Like if, if they can step it up more harder again, they're, they're going to be very formidable. 
Yeah. But then, of course, lose to Sligo or to Shamrock Rover or to Shelburne, rather, sorry, uh, yeah. a number of weeks ago and they had a couple of draws in there as well. Uh, probably that wee patch coming for them at, at, at a good time in the season because clubs do go through patches as the league progresses. And in that sort of short period, maybe that was the, the sort of wee shot in the arm that, that the Candy Stripes needed to, to, to get back on, on their momentum run again. Yeah, hundred percent. The, the the UCD game is a big confidence boost. Though they did a couple of poor results, the Shelburne game they were excellent in the first half, and they really were poor in the second half. Shelburne were good. Uh, um, Derry could have put the game to bed by half time. That they, they didn't. They got egg in their face. So so they recovered well from that. And the last two results have got them back to the level they were at, and maybe even improved. So yeah. again, Friday will be another test for them. Yeah, apparently that first half against Pats was the best football they've played all year. Jim and McGonagall was a huge part of that. Um, yeah. And he's he's firing on all cylinders at the minute, Kevin. Yeah, he looks, anytime I've seen him, he looks very, very sharp. He looks hungry. He's he's not the biggest, but he really puts himself about. The, he's very physical for a small striker, you know, and I, he's, he looks like he can get goals in every game. Yeah. Uh, so then what about the rest of, of the ties? Uh, Lego Rovers off to Shelburne. Rovers will be looking for three points on the road, but it's a big game for Demi and Duffsay because they'll be looking to bounce back at the after that defeat the Harps. Yeah, they'll, they'll be hugely disappointed. They, they've been they've been really inconsistent this season. Um, they've had some fantastic results, one on the Brandyville, and then obviously losing at home to Harps was poor. So they 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 will want to get a level of consistency. You know, we're a quarter of the way through the season or so, so they should, this team and, and new, the, although it's a new team, it should be starting to get settled as well. So. They find their feet. They probably are going to be in around mid table or lower, but it's very difficult to gauge them at this point. Yeah, and Dundalk have sort of been lurking outside the top two. They're up to third at the moment now, and uh, Dundalk, of course, had troubles over the last couple of seasons. But they're starting, are they, Gavin, to get back into the form that that Dundalk would have been of old? Yeah, they're they're quietly going about their business. They're they're picking up results most weeks, and and. And nobody's really talking about them. And the fact that they're third in the league shows they're doing something right. So obviously Stevie and Alls come in and, and settled the thing and, and, and got a group working for him. And and maybe a transfer window or two, they might be back up challenging for the, for titles again if it goes well. So look, it's good to see a Dundalk team going well because they've great support and stuff as well. Yeah, you would expect them to beat UCD in Friday, would you? Uh, you would, yeah. I think UCD are... Are struggling no no obviously in football you never know and and the, they're due a result they're going to get a result some week you know um but the, they're struggling for goals they're struggling to you know, create chances and stuff and it shows the big step up between the two divisions you know yeah and i suppose from a ucd point of view as well their team changes mid-season doesn't it gavin because there's um there's players mm -hmm. moving away haven't finished their scholarships yeah, with yeah. the college and uh so there's a bit of transformation there which which if you're fighting at the bottom end of the table can't be good at times no it can't look there's pros and cons to that sometimes a freshness can help you um obviously they're better players coming out of their scholarships and the college degrees they're they're going to move on the you no know, other League of Ireland clubs or maybe across the water. So they obviously lose their better, more experienced players at that stage. But it, they take in the freshness and they take in new players. It, it, it takes, I suppose, it takes a bit of pressure off the management and and that side of it in terms of relegation or fighting relegation. That expectations are slightly different than they are in other football clubs. But at the same time, um, no, knowing the management team and stuff, they. They want to do well and they want to progress and they want to push on. So it's 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 difficult for them. It's it's very difficult and, it, and it's very hard to see how they're going to climb the table at this point. Yeah, one other tie. Drogheda United against St. Pats. Drogheda St. Pats again. Again, Drogheda need the points. Pats, after a bad defeat last week, you'd expect them to have some sort of bounce back, you know. So like I, I would have thought Pats will win that one. Yeah, uh, and just finally noting Georgie Kelly, uh, he mm. stepped up to the mark. We waited a while to see Mr. Kelly in action for for Rotherham, but uh, yeah. he'll go down as one of the players that helped in making history mm. for the side at the weekend, and uh, it was yeah. phenomenal for him to be part of that. Gavin, it was great to amazing. see, it, wasn't it? Uh, amazing week for him. Uh, it's just it just fell from just happened, and 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 he took his goal really well. Um, it's it sets him up brilliantly for next season. He's obviously had a bit of a slow start since he went there. Well, they're acclimatizing to the squad and he, he had a couple of injuries and stuff to, to get up to that level but some players go to clubs and it takes them 20 30 games before they get a goal but to get a goal in a game of that magnitude just been on the pitch it's, it's it sets him up and his confidence will be sky high he's been in the pre-season going into championship football and look 
his opportunities are now and, and hopefully he, he really takes it you know yeah but he doesn't forget about home because uh, i know in the interviews afterwards that he was talking about where he was from and, and where he yeah. came from and to to be to be where he is now in the journey that he was on but he doesn't forget about home when he goes away no george is a, he's a very sensible young fellow. he's very grounded so he is he always he's good manners and, and and a really good lad always always you know wants to chat and have the crack like so i, I don't think he'll ever lose that he's not the type of person as i say he, he, he took the route slightly different. He, 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 he studied, he went to college, he done that, and, and it's worked out well for him. You know, so so he's a sensible lad, so, he is, so I don't think he'll ever forget that. Okay. Listen, it's always good to talk to you, and good to see you as well, Gavin. Thanks for joining us this week. No more, Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.